Good morning, all. This is uh, welcome to Legal Tech Live. I'm Nick Rishwain. Joining me today is my co host for the day, Jay Giuliano of Pat Deck LLC. And, and our guest today is Jeffrey Poirier of Subtense.io. In Subtense, he is going to tell us about. Uh, for our Legal Tech Live viewers, they have an I, uh, AI solution, artificial intelligence solution for IP attorneys, and uh, Jay being our resident IP attorney and patent attorney has probably come prepared with some great questions for us. Yeah. It is Please. an artificially, Subtense is an artificially intelligent patent tool, and it goes Beyond keywords and synonyms, Subtense understands ideas, ensuring a novel, comprehensive, and accurate search. Their AI provides insightful analysis and visually presents your unique view into the patent universe. And uh, and and that's a broad sort of get a get a feeling for what we do. Jeffrey has been influenced and inspired by computer development. Uh, in design since Apple, and he's, uh, let me get a little bit more information here. You've done multimedia software design and development for about 27 years. Uh, mostly in the, in, a little bit longer than that even. Nowadays. A little longer than that even. And, and you've worked, uh, walked down the user interface path, it sounds like, big time in user interface. And uh, Subtense, tell us about Subtense and how you got involved in, in Subtense. Where did it come from? Absolutely. Um, so, in our streams for the past, uh, in our feeds for the past few years, maybe, you know, five years, we've been uh, witnessing complaints around intellectual property and how difficult patents are and where the boundaries of patents lie. Um, these are the types of things that obviously pop up in any single, like on the Guardian, on the front page, when it's $6 billion from, for this particular fight. And uh, it's an interesting thing. I'm sort of a closet inventor, and I have never had the tenacity to try to push my own intellectual property through the intellectual property system. It's not in my nature to do that. It's not in my character to do that. So when I'm looking at Jay, who's got a degree over here and, and actually practices, it's like, yes, man, that is a, that is a level of dedication and, and, and creation of knowledge that just blow, always blows me away. And I, I come from a technology background. Uh, my dad worked for IBM. He was so I'm a second generation computer geek. He was programming in the, he was, uh, you know, he got picked up to do programming in the '60s. Um, and as I was growing up, uh, it was conversations around the table where he would rubber duck uh, from a technology phrase. He would he would explain to me what a what a database was when I'm 13 years old and, and all this other stuff. And from my mom's side, she's also a computer geek. She actually owned a software hardware store in the eighties in Dallas. Uh, but she's also an artist and her dad's an artist. So I've got this artistic bent coming from this side. And because I was exposed to all this stuff at a really young age, Apple II, all the way to the IBM universe, um, I have no distinction in my mind where um, technology and art lives. And so that's why I've gravitated toward user experience, uh, 3D animation, and stuff like this. Um, that being said, as the closet inventor, uh, without the tenacity and to go through the entire process to lock down my own personal intellectual property or what I think is a good idea, um, getting exposed to this over the past couple of years when Don and I started looking into this, uh, Don, my co-founder, Brad's another co-founder. We picked him up later. Uh, he we couldn't stop bugging him about it because he's got the he's got the tenacity to uh, with his 35 pat, patent grants under his belt. Uh, he's got the tenacity and awareness to to get intellectual property through the systems. Um, it took a little while, and we started out trying to figure out. We had Don and I had an idea. Where we were like, "Hey, we're going to use the blockchain to do this thing over here, and that's going to help preserve some intellectual property for somebody." We went out talking to potential customers, and they just went. No, 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 we don't need that. We can't even search. We can't search. Okay. And that's a weird thing to hear in 2014, 2015, 2016. We can't search because it's so, um, it's so common knowledge that search is solved. That's been resolved. And it took a long time. And 
uh, we had to really uh, get past our own skepticism in this space. Right. This doesn't make sense. Why can't people search? Uh, and it took a little while. It took a lot of customer conversations to figure this out. And our take on it is exactly when you're searching for a novelty, the vocabulary which wraps up those ideas is in a proto state. It doesn't exist. There's not a, uh, a real vernacular there. And that comes from, from my standpoint as a neophyte. Let's say that I'm a, a complete noob and I have a create, clever idea in the basement about, oh, I want to look at you know automobile hubcaps or some, mm -hmm. some doggone thing. I don't know anything about that particular subject matter. So how do I start? Uh, how do I start? I, I want to just start that process. And then we have um, Brad, who's an expert in on the financial side. His his universe, uh, his path, his history comes from uh, the financial side, and in fact, um, uh, biotech, where he was doing a biometric payment authorization. That's where that's where his, uh, his team's. And that's Brad Schilt with you. Brad your Schilt, your Brad CEO. Yeah, CEO and co-founder. Yeah, he's, he's great. Um, and so he's an expert, and he and his team were actually starting a new project and moving to a different domain. And by moving to a different domain, it, they were having a difficult time getting started themselves, even though they're experts in understanding how to navigate that whole system. Moving to a different domain, plus trying to get international information as well was a gigantic challenge. Uh, and then we went and talked to some other folks, and these folks are the expert scientists that live on the fringe of, of human knowledge. Mm -hmm. And again, their vocabulary sets are still forming, even though they're a, a hyper expert uh, in, a, in a particular technology, um, they might not understand because they're so isolated in a particular space that there's a connection way over here uh, to another domain. So after we got our heads wrapped around that and being the computer geeks that we are, um, Don and I started prototyping some, uh, some ideas and some designs. And when we started to R&D this stuff, the result that we got back from our initial, our, our initial creations were, befuddled us. They were really surprisingly good immediately, just using basic, um, basic tools and basic methodology. Okay. Uh, once we saw that, we went back and talked to some customers and said, hey, here's what we're planning on doing, uh, potential customers rather, and this is what we're thinking about doing. Is this interesting to you? And when we got uh, some, some yeses from some, some really nice folks, we went, okay, let's, let's turn the afterburners on and let's get, uh, let's get to building this thing for real. All right. And to tell us a little bit briefly uh, about what it is, you, you call it AI or artificial intelligence as a service. Now, I was reading on, on your, your website, and, for, and we'll keep it mostly for the attorneys here. Right. Uh, and you said our artificial intelligence, or the website says it, you're going to use it in a patent search. Uh, critical piece of the patent search and you using natural language processing or NLP and machine learning uh, not to be uh, NLP not to be confused with neuro linguistic programming <laughs> and, and you're going to use that for the IP attorney in a patent search can you explain that a little bit for the listener because I'm not sure that maybe AI as a service given your team Giving your company and team a competitive advantage uh, in in acquiring new and loyal customers. How does what does that mean? How does all of this come together for us? Absolutely. Let's let's talk about our user facing tool, which is called the guide. And what the guide is is the guide acts as an interviewer straight away, where I, as the user, in my own vocabulary, and it does not matter what my knowledge, my level of knowledge or level of expertise is. In my own words, I describe my idea. This might be a claim, for example, a claim, for example, or it might be uh, an early step um, in uh, you've outlined what your claims might be, and you start to break these down into separate sections. Okay. So, my long form in my own vocabulary, I put this information into the guide. The guide then goes and reads against our corpora. Um, you guys are AI guys, to, to, so against our corporate, against our knowledge bases, um, and then we have a series of these things. 
uh, it goes in there and says, hey, these things fit together. I recognize these concepts or these ideas, these sub-ideas of your main idea, uh, and then allows the user to disambiguate, to say, hey, I don't, you know, I'm placing an order online, and the system will come back to say, there's a financial order, uh, there's a or biological order, as an example. Um, hey, disambiguate between these things. So it helps, uh, on one level, it helps augment your, your idea from the get-go, where uh, it says, hey, you're looking into these spaces, have you thought about these other spaces, um, whether they're uh, classifications or domains? Um, so it tries to, so it helps the user create a broader, uh, both a broader uh, concept into how to apply the idea that itself, and then it also helps create specificity, where, again, I'll use myself as the noob example, where diving over into, uh, diving over into some other domain, I don't have that vocabulary, and it says, oh, hey, I think you probably mean these things over here. Um, once that's created, it then goes off, and the, the guy then goes off and creates these advanced searches um, against you know all the existing things, all the existing platforms that live out there to go off and find uh, uh, both patents and NPL, uh, and it does it in an exhaustive way, and it does it through international languages and all that other stuff. Once these results come back, then it turns around and reads those things again against the appropriate knowledge bases, okay. against these appropriate cor uh, corpora. Um, once it tracks all that information, it produces a nice little report. So when it's somebody like me, it's as simple as a FICO score. And when it's somebody who's a complete and utter expert, it allows them to deep dive down the path that they need to get to. Excellent. So, so what, and I want, yeah, go ahead, Jay. I just want one follow-up question before Jay. So what, what my data set in my natural language, what I input is going to be different from yours and different from Jay's. So, exactly. yeah. all right. Now, Jay, go ahead. You had a question? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple questions. So you talk about NPLs, which, uh, so that's non-patent literature. So it's basically something not in a patent office around the world. What, what, um, what data sets are you currently using um, to search across um, once you've uh, understood the input from the user using the, the, the corpa uh, of, of knowledge um, in a particular subject matter? Sure, we use all of the big giant search engines, of course, just to see what in the world is out there. And then we um, specialize to different domains. So for example, um, we'll go off and we'll track down, um, say, uh, I, I don't want to give too much away because we are still filing some patents, so I'm going to try to be as, as far back sure. as I can and okay, yeah, sorry. and don't share anything that you can't share we don't we don't demand that on this show it's not everyone's watching it. everybody's <laughs> watching this is why this is why we're doing it because I'm going to share everything you guys I want it to be exactly as uh, anyway so um, so, so uh, we hit all of the social media platforms and then we hit um, specialized no uh, domain knowledges uh, you know uh, archive.org and uh, other scientific domains like this. Um, and then we also, we do little clever things to, to get into platforms which are a, a little bit harder to touch that are, um, uh, where the data is, uh, is, is disorganized. That's really sort of the fun stuff, is getting into that disorganized data of, uh, uh, of video and, and, what, and whatnot. Okay, all right. And yeah. so, Go ahead, Jay. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I was intrigued. No, I was intrigued by the the notion that you have that um, depending upon the result, depending upon who the the questioner is. So maybe it's an individual inventor versus um, someone. Maybe it's a researcher. Um, right. So that's another type of person. Or versus an attorney, you're you're trying to provide a report that's more suited for the particular um, questioner. Um, and so, uh, you know, how did you arrive at that? What, what have you found the reaction to be? And, um, and, and what, what's, what's the choice of the user? Let's say you guess wrong, right? Maybe it's a person who's really deep in a subject matter, um, but you, you guess that he's a neophyte, um, you know, just a, a random inventor that just has a random idea. Um, so 
So how do you go through that process of deciding what information to give to the requester of information? That's such a good question, okay? So when you enter into when you enter your idea into our into the guide, uh, it makes a general assessment as to what your skill level is immediately. We can say, hey, this person's an expert or this person's not an expert. And based on the feedback loop that happens as you as the user disambiguates, we can also then say, uh, we can also then say, hey, this person's either an expert or a non-expert. Now, Jay, when you open up your service to us through an API. We'll be able to go, oh, hey, Jay, like when we're hitting you guys, Jay can corroborate that this person is exactly, uh, mm -hmm. is exactly an expert. By the way, where is that on your roadmap, Jay? We <laughs> are, we fully support you guys. That's our front end, back end. That's everything. Yes. <laughs> Good. Good. Figure out pricing. Man. Figure out pricing. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And then I'll let Nick ask a question. Um, what I'm curious about is how long is the initial um, query process? I mean, I know you get to uh, an answer where you think you know what the person's asking about, but how long is that uh, uh, question answer inter interchange between you and uh, between the, the questioner and the service? Our target is, is to actually have it to the point where <clears throat> Our phrase is exactly this. We want you to see a report in the amount of time it normally takes just to communicate to your researcher. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so exactly, really, ideally really fast, and depending on the context of what you're trying to accomplish, that search can be a living search which will continue to operate in the background or it will be time locked in a particular space just in case that's what your needs are. <laughs> Uh, so the ideal scenario, and this is a this is a real long shot at this exact moment. We're in alpha, everybody. So expectations um, <clears throat> is in an hour. Like I would actually like to be seeing results in an hour. That's uh, that's that's especially if it's in a topic where we say, hey, in this classification, we're actually going off and putting a lot more attention in this particular space. I mean, you understand that attorneys work in days and weeks, so <laughs> an hour an hour is a great response time, but. Um, it's not usually what we look for. <laughs> I, you know, as an outsider coming into this industry, man, every time I hear stuff like this, I just go, whoa, this is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, our timelines, uh, sort of Don, Don and mine from the tech side, is different than Brad's on the, uh, on the legal side. And it's really, it's, sort of, it's just refreshing to always, uh, always, always hear these types of things. Um, and... All, we, all, we, all we're, our goal is is really to facilitate authentic communication uh, in, in this entire, we're talking about the humanity's collective creativity. And to have a difficult time to tap into that and to understand exactly where we are is just, it blows my mind. <laughs> and I have, in, in relation to that, humanity's collective creativity, is there a subject matter or a particular subject matter that the guide is is most useful in searching right now? Is there a single or a couple of them that they're? Technology. Uh, technology where, and it doesn't matter whether it's gonna be uh, uh, genetics or electronics or engineering, computer science, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so we definitely focus out there in the technology space. So less uh, on, say, the pharmaceutical kind of thing, those types of developments right now. The chemistry is a little, maybe not the the best. It's not there yet on on something like that, or not yet. But it's it's actually in our purview. It's in our it's in our it's in our specific space because we're more experts in terms of uh, the tech. The, you know, our our version of technology. Sure. Uh, we have a little bit more focus on that stuff, uh, but absolutely. With all of the advances in, in terms of genetics and with the acceleration of that, uh, in terms of how quickly these advances happen, uh, the quantity of the stuff in there, and then the density of the material inside of it. Uh, if I sit around and I say, oh, I've got an idea for, a, for a, a CRISPR methodology to, I don't know anything about this stuff, by the way. Right. So this is all no, I understand. <laughs> it is, um, I want to uh, splice a tomato onto my house cat. And Who wouldn't understand how to get to that point? And so, again, we're starting with the user. We're starting with understanding what the user's vocabulary is, and then turning around and mapping that to what the real world thinks. Right. Interesting. And in a kind of a follow up of that, 
would be <coughs> the guide. Is this, you call it a user facing tool, is it available to IP attorneys yet? You say alpha, and so there's no, uh, have, have you demoed this to, to many of them? The, have you demoed it to the J's of the world? Not to Jay, and I, Jay, I'm really excited, bro. Really <laughs> um, so I, I definitely want to put you on the list to get you a little more exposure because your your feedback is exactly uh, one of those points of feedback that we're really looking for right now. Um, the, we showed early preliminary designs, uh, mockups, and, and a feature set to. Um, I'm not going to name drop. Uh, certainly, a Fortune 500, a high level Fortune 500. Um, uh, attorney he runs the department and it's a big one and uh, we hit the nail on the head uh, with a couple of key points and when they saw that the uh, the conversation went from from for sort of this to mm, okay all right we'll give it a roll so we have some beta users lined up to use this um, and and the interesting thing is we're tracking down these folks who are just who are really dedicated to that authentic conversation those are exactly uh, our dream users. So this is definitely Jay. This is definitely um, Blue Iron IP out here on the front range. I'm in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, Blue Iron IP on the front range is another one who wants that authentic conversation. Um, so it's definitely for those users. Excellent, excellent. Jay, uh, anything to follow yeah. up on that? No, that, that was, well, yeah, my, one, one of my questions was, um, you know, you know what, what is the mix of, uh, you know, uh, not ideal client, but but the client. Meaning, is it attorneys? Is it the the individual? You know, users, the 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 the, the nominal inventor that might come to talk to me. I assume it makes more sense for them to to uh, search their idea first, because usually when an individual inventor comes to me, um, yeah. it's problematic because. Um, they, they just don't, they, they, it's a vocabulary problem, but it's also, they, they don't know what uh, the, the world has in terms of um, exposing their idea. And so it'd be great for them to talk to you first, because if they pass a threshold with you guys, then it's, then it's great for us to have a conversation and I can help them uh, quickly, more directly, and probably more economically too. So, so Jay is talking about just absolutely one aspect, and we'll talk about these two different clientels. So, the our, one of our one of our dream client set is the Fortune 500 in-house patent mm -hmm. Okay, um, these folks, uh, it's been our experience, are are really dedicated to getting unquestionably the best answers out there, um, and they're willing to take a little bit more time. And uh, and I think you, Jay, you even mentioned this of not being on the out clock in a different or having that different uh having that different model allows them to be a little bit more uh experimental um uh, and you were talking jay about uh, getting a tool into the pipeline and uh, that's that's such an interesting challenge so rather than uh and from the ind individual inventor from me going to jay um that's it's i want a tool to screen how foolish I am before I even engage Jay. That's the that's the sort of the bridge, this little gap to say, oh, this is this isn't worth anybody's time. I shouldn't be bugging Jay ever, versus, oh, there might be something here. And so helping to bridge that gap in order to get to somebody who is an expert is exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to level up this neophyte user, the me, um, and we're trying to amplify and turn the uh, experts into superheroes. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And do you guys have any idea, because I notice on, on your site you have three kind of solutions for enterprise, for the IP attorneys, for the inventors. Do you have any idea, and in, in it may be too early here, do you plan on doing a membership based or, or or a one time, like I just, I'm a one time inventor, I wanna pay a one time fee and, and use it that way. Is it gonna be per job or is it gonna be membership for, for, and if you can answer it in the three, what is there gonna be something for enterprise attorneys and inventors? How do you plan on doing uh, that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, exactly when it, when it comes to me coming in there to use it, um, I pay a fixed fee for a case. It's a, it's a search report. Okay. Um, as a user, I can actually go back and make those changes without incurring any, I can go in and update it to a certain degree 
um, in order to, and I don't incur any extra costs inside of this thing. So a search report, which does exactly that, it augments your idea, um, parses your idea, helps you clarify your idea, then goes out and performs all the searches, and then does that first layer of analysis for you to say, yes or no, you know, pursue this, don't pursue this. Um, that's about, that's a $1,400 charge for that individual inventor. As you are a, a higher level user, or a more frequent user, um, you still are on the uh, pay per use scenario um, that allows us to compartmentalize these particular things and make sure that as a user, you don't get exposed to any extra data that you don't want to see. Um, and then, you know, eventually if we can uh, get our foot into the door at the USPTO, then we'll talk to them about a subscription model. Okay. All right. So it's it's mostly pay per use at this at, at present stage. Okay. All right. And what are your? I, let, let's let's go into it since it is Legal Tech Live. What yes. have you found to be the biggest problems with adoption? Has there been problems with adoption? What or what are your top three problems you're facing at this point? And maybe it's not adoption. I don't know that adoption is exactly the right answer there where um, it's a combination of a couple of things where we're, uh, we're early enough in our life cycle as a startup that uh, we have the right yeses from beta users okay. coming down the pipeline. Uh, once we know that we're serving them exceptionally well, uh, we hope that uh, word of mouth will help um, because we're focused specifically on the Fortune 500 in-house uh, target market uh, in terms of attorneys, that sort of streamlines exactly how we go and focus and, and help the, help chat with those folks. And we have, uh, say, Sandrine Mathis on our team, who's a Fortune 500 marketing expert, okay. in, order to that, in order to help bridge those types of gaps. Um, so, so that's not, like, our biggest problem right now is, is getting all of the technology in place. Okay. It's such a such a it's such a big task, and making sure that all the mechanics and all the systems are functioning fluidly uh, is really where we're focused right now. Okay. All right. Jay, so, so yeah, if I, yeah, if I could ask a question along that vein, so I assume um, based on what you're talking about in your discussion earlier about APIs, so so you're essentially querying different systems. Um, yes. In the process, so you're gonna your front end will will parse. Um, you know, the question or the area of technology, do some follow up, but, um, and, and then you'll import what might be relevant to the answer uh, for purposes of delivering uh, you, the guide will deliver a report to, to the user and the user can tweak, tweak that and uh, research. Yes. Um, okay. What will be the, uh, what will be your goal? What will be the success point? for you is there is there one do you see that as a uh... oh look you guys the second the second i can be hanging out with my nephew uh and he says i just invented an apple vacuum he was going out and picking up crab apples in the backyard underneath the tree and the second he said and he goes i just invented an apple vacuum i want to i want to do build this and he's an engineer he could do it like, it would be so thrilling to be able to walk in here, type up here, Apple vacuum, and then have a little description of what this is. And then have projections of, hey, we think you might actually make this much in the market if you pursue it exactly like this. Um, how would you like us to get this process started for you? Um, and to be able to, to take my craziness and get it into the marketplace as quickly as possible to get real feedback based on this. Um, to be able to share ideas instantaneously uh, is really just an unbelievable driving force. Um, we want to build bridges and not barriers. Uh, that's what that's what our ultimate goal is. Okay, I like that. I mean, because right, because what if you're if you have an idea right now, what do you do? You Google it. <laughs> and then you have to go through reams and reams and say, well, it doesn't look like anybody has this, but somebody might yeah. have it patented already. Exactly. It might be living out there on a, on a Japanese blog from 1999. Right. Uh, it, uh, there's just all of the little ramifications about where all of this information is stored. And with the amount of connectivity that exists, it's, you know, how do you encompass all of human knowledge and get the results back 
get those results back. It's just, it's really breathtaking. Interesting. Interesting. What are you, what, where do you think, when will you get this out of alpha and into the IP attorney's hands? Uh, like how, what, what is, is there a goal in mind that you can share? Absolutely. Absolutely. January 15th, right in the middle of January, yeah. we're going to have, we're going to get our, these, this thing into the beta user's hands. Okay. We have a couple of, uh, outside of our internal crew, we have a couple of extra friendly folks that we want to uh, open those doors up to a little bit earlier to get some feedback. Uh, but definitely uh, in January 15th. Excellent. Jay? So, yeah, so w one of the other questions, and I know you're talking to Fortune 500 in-house counsel, um, so, the, so their focus is on uh, inventions, like maybe big ideas that they're working on for uh, areas of innovation, um, you know, future, future channels, future products for, for themselves. So... Outside of that, um, maybe we'll call it big innovations. Do you see a market for um, the incremental innovations um, in the market? Because you know, I, I looked at your site, oh. and, and you guys. I mean, they're, they're, and you're you're correct. There there are six hundred thousand patent applications filed every year. You know, the the strange thing about it is, and I work for clients too. When we file patent applications. And they're insistent that we do not do pre-search before we file. Yes. We, we yes. write and then we file and it's like, yes. well, maybe you should search, right? And my, 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 my preference is to search because I, I don't like to waste time. And if, you're, if your idea is kind of crappy, I just <laughs> kind of want to, I, I want to know it before I waste my time. Real feedback, <laughs> real feedback, yeah. But there is a real. There was a reason behind the pre-search. Uh, maybe you can elaborate on that, Jay, for the listeners or, or replay. Yeah. Those. So, so th there's two reasons for the pre-search is maybe you can get a stronger patent, but there's a reason not to do it too because you're not required to. There's no obligation to, and it's really up to the patent office to to find the appropriate art and reject your claim. And if if they do not, um, you know, you'll you'll get a patent, and then you'll deal with you'll kick the can down the road. You'll deal with the the, exactly. the issues later okay. and maybe that's not great for the ecosystem but it is certainly good for your patent numbers um, as, yep. as a corporation and, and it's good for your portfolio so yeah. um those are those are the tensions those are the tensions okay so jay's saying it in a really really great fashion so to, to answer jay's question earlier yes we know that there is a long tail for this middle range between the neophyte and the expert so there's this long tail right there of people who still want authentic answers and, and authentic uh, conversation. Um, and these are the folks like, like Brad and his old team who, who have 35 together. Like they have, so they're this sort of this middle tier where they're, off, they're really, they do their homework. They do their due diligence like nobody else that I've heard so far. Just because they want their patents to actually have the, you know, one of the things that really came up, and Jay, and Jay just talked about this instantaneous just a moment ago, was, uh, and this was early on in the conversation, was me, I was befuddled when I was talking to somebody who said, I'm not going to do a search. I don't want to know. Like, <laughs> right. What? I've never, I can't even conceive of this. Um, and so we're not necessarily targeting those folks. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep, makes sense. Um, so what, and obviously you probably already are aware of this, but we'll talk about it for, for the audience that, you know, part of, part of your uh, service uh, works not just for um, pre-grant activities, patent filings and discerning inventions, but, you know, there's probably even probably more value um, in post-grant activities um, which yeah. is what I do, right? Like, I mean, I joke with Nick all the time. My, my job is to kill patents, right? That's what I do. Uh, that's what I love yeah. to do. Um, <laughs> that's, that's so invaluable. That's so invaluable, man. It's, it's ridiculous. That's so how valuable that is. Honestly. And Jay, that's but, what but I, that's, that's not a focus for you guys at this point in time. No, no, no. But do you uh, see a value here, Jay, in the litigation, the patent litigation for conducting this type of research? It's maybe not a priority of theirs, but may it uh, is there using something like this, the artificial intelligence for for the research during patent litigation? Is that 
Do you see that as yeah. valuable? Would it be valuable? Yeah, certainly. I mean, one of the, one of the funny things that I always talk to my clients about, everyone always wants to know budgets, Nick, you, you get that all the time too. And uh, they're like, you know, what's, if I want to challenge this and what's the budget to do X? And I'm like, well, how good's the prior art? You give me great prior art, or if I have great prior art, it's really cheap because you made my job really easy, right? I don't have to explain things. The arguments are very crisp and clean, and it's uh, it's apparent on its face. If the, the more creative I have to get um, with prior art to invalidate a, a patent and explain things and bring in experts, and it, it, the more expensive it is, and then there's more risk too. So the the better the prior art, the the cheaper the process for me and for the client. And that, that's why I think, yes, there's certainly value to the extent you can deliver um, a, a, uh, a description of technology that, that meets the subject matter that, that's in question. Yeah. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Interesting. And, and we hope to get there years from now. Right. I mean, we have, we have a 10 year plan to, to get, we, got a, we have a long way to go. We've been at it for a little while. Um, and, and yeah. How long, just, how long have you been at it for thus far, your team? Uh, Don and I started on this two years ago. Okay. okay. Uh, and we, we did it in a in a soft way because we had, in our case, we had to educate ourselves on the on the domain. Um, and as I said earlier, every time we got an answer, we had to take a step back and go, "My God, I can't believe this isn't you know this is weird." Um, so uh, we got Brad involved uh, early on uh, as well, and and that really helped raise the bar. Getting me out there and talking to uh, customers downline was, was is of course the most valuable thing in the universe. Um, so we've been uh, as I say for two years. Okay. Yeah. So so a rule of thumb that I and I've talked with Nick about this before, and this will help you guys and all the other legal tech people oh, yeah. out there. Just assume that whatever is happening, whatever you're working on today in the problem, whatever it was ten years ago, that's where the that's where lawyers and the law is in terms of development and technology. And if you do that, you put yourself 10 years prior, you're like, okay, that now this all makes sense. I, I, and you look, you're speaking, you're so gospel. Yeah, I mean, that's gospel. <laughs> it, it, oh my gosh, yes. It, it is yeah. absolutely accurate. It's just that it, we have trouble getting the lawyer to use the search for an expert witness on our site. But you know these are all available to you if you search yourself. You, you learn how to use Google, right? You can use this as well. But it, it, it is a problem. We are seeing some some improvements on it. But uh, Jay is, is absolutely accurate with that comment. Uh, we go about 45 or so minutes. We're coming up on about 40. We go 45 to 50. OK. Any last minute things, what does the listener need to know about subtents that would really get them by January 15th, they want to, uh, I, I want to be involved in beta on January 15th. What would you like them to know? Just go to our website, go to subtents.io, um, I think it's right here, subtents.io, um, and sign up, uh, contact us, sign up. And we'll put you on our mailing list when we're going to send out, uh, you know, bi-monthly uh, updates as to what our progress is. That's probably the best way to keep track of us. Um, certainly, you guys, obviously, you ping me, and I'll, I'll throw you right onto the beta list. Uh, we'd love to love to have feedback from uh, experts in the in the space. Excellent. And what would the the customer, potential customer, what would you like them to know upcoming January fifteenth? What what do they need to know about you that that they don't already? Um, if you're a Fortune 500, if you're a Fortune 500 uh, type attorney, in-house attorney, really looking for that authentic communication, um, and you're specific, you're specifically in uh, technology as a domain. If your company is in technology as a domain, by all means, reach out to us. Uh, we love having more and more and more conversations about that. We like as much feedback as we can possibly get. Whenever you guys give us feedback, by the way, you can go straight at the problems. Don't hesitate. Don't don't worry about your language. Just go. That's silly or that's foolish or you guys are nothing about this stuff. The more feedback we get, the 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 finer grit sandpaper our our finished product is is done with. Uh, we really like that type of feedback. Excellent. And yeah, and, Jay, and so, you have some follow ups. Yeah, there? yeah. I was going to say, and what we can talk offline about this a little bit. Um, but um, what's the best way um, for me or other attorneys that might be looking to contact you 
because I, there's some in-house counsel that, that I am certain, because uh, I know they do their own searches they, initially before they send it out to uh, you know, uh, a search firm because uh, they just like to kind of get a handle on things. And there's a couple. And how do I get them in touch with you so you can, y- you can start this process with them right away? Or is it the alpha or beta? Exactly. The, the two best, fastest ways um, is hit me up on Twitter. Actually, hit me personally for the moment. We're finishing up the infrastructure for all of the communications. We're just popping our head above water for the first time. Um, and so we've got a little bit more infrastructure to deal with. So hit me at, at Jeffrey Poirier, which I just put into the uh, chat stream there, at Jeffrey Poirier. Um, we have at subtense underscore IO. It's not being uh, used yet. And we're, uh, we're, we're setting that aside. And then you can also hit me up at Jeffrey at subtense.io. Those are, those are absolutely the best ways to get a hold of me. And that's Jeffrey. Okay. Would you like me to put that in the chat or leave that out, Jeff? No, I'll do it right here. Okay. I'll, uh, I just, uh, you know, sometimes the emails, I don't want it on the play for people to, to get that. Some people are hesitant, especially if it's a uh, let personal let one. And I wanted to mention that the the subtense underscore io on Twitter is not visible currently. No, it's not. Okay. It will be. It will be at the end of the weekend. We'll, we got a okay. long. Right? I'm gonna go uh, have a barbecue with the family after this, and then when that's all done, I'll, I'll finish. Oh, the okay. Yeah, I just uh, sometimes uh, I'm used to my clients forgetting that their websites are offline sometimes, yeah, yeah. so I want to bring that to their uh, to your attention in case. Uh, oh, um, Je- uh, Jay, any last minute questions for Jeff? For um, I, I, I had one lingering question, and I don't want to, you, to take too much of your time. But what have you found um, during the, the demo process? Like how, uh, just just for the, the founders out there, because I, I have you know similar thoughts. How quickly um, do you get to the point where you think? This is going well or not going well, and what what are the what are the signals that that you see or hear um, from uh, during the demo? Because I saw before the the reaction, um, whether they sit back or whether they lean forward, is is a signal for you to determine their interest level. What what other things you know quickly can can you give hints to the audience because they're, they're interested in that type of thing? Sure, absolutely. From just from that standpoint, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about this really in an abstract way is one of the things that we do, uh, our tool does, is, is it parses language to try to determine what's going on underneath it. What is the user's intent to do this? Um, and as a natural byproduct of that, sort of our, our, our leadership team has honed their skills to be able to identify um, sort of linguistic, you know, linguistic traits to say, uh, linguistically, what does it look like? What does that reaction look like? Um, and uh, to get real hyper clarity in terms of uh, saying, you're saying, yes, this is interesting. Can you explain why? Um, getting that level of feedback because, uh, you know, nobody wants to say, hey, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so getting that answer, getting that real answer is actually is a little bit tricky. Um, my, so real quick, my dad wrote software for a user experience lab in the 80s. Uh-huh. I trained in the user experience lab doing software, and so we understand, so one of the things that I learned was there is a complete disparity between what people say and what people do. Um, so track what people do, um, give uh, some leeway to what people say, but really pay a little bit more attention to this. That's right. Um, That's it. Actions right? speak louder than words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, finally, is there anything that we didn't cover that you would want a user or a listener to hear about? Uh, I mean, I know there's so much to talk about in a, in a startup, but is there anything that you really wanted to say as a last minute item that, uh, that a listener should know about, about subtext? Probably the number one thing I want to say is just thank you guys. Um, Nick, I really appreciate I started following you maybe like 10 days ago on Twitter. Uh, and, and I started paying attention to that. Um, just getting connected. Like, I'm really excited about getting connected to the legal tech space. Um, that's that's really a lot of fun. Uh, it's great to talk to experts who really understand all of this stuff. Um, 
whenever you talk to us, don't be afraid to tell us that we're silly or wrong or whatever. Um, that's we're, we're not really attached to any of that. We our internal saying we have is I don't need to be right. This needs to be right. Uh, so by all means, you know, challenge us and let us know where we're dropping the ball, where we're failing, where we don't understand the t don't understand what's going on. Uh, especially with me, because I'm coming outside of the entire domain. Uh, I, I'm as I'm as ignorant as the day is long in a lot of ways, um, and I really appreciate the, all the feedback and information that we get. It's, it's been my pleasure. I thank you for reaching out. Uh, we had uh, we had somebody have to back out because of a flight, and and this worked out great. Uh, so I really appreciate you reaching out. When I get, uh, I'm a little backed up on creating the YouTube video. Hopefully, I'll have it done shortly, and you guys can do with it uh, what you will when I send it to you. Uh, Love it. You can share it. You can upload it to your blog. You'll see from time to time on on my personal Twitter and on the Legal Tech Live Twitter that it'll get retweeted out, and and uh, I'll do it on Facebook and, and LinkedIn and, and and the such, and hopefully get some people interested and in paying attention and oh. and learning all the exciting stuff that is happening in the legal tech sphere these days. With that, I'm Nick Rishwain with my co-host today. Jay Giuliano. <laughs> we haven't gotten down the our uh, yeah. interaction yet. It. <laughs> and with it's great us. talking with you, Jeffrey. Um, and and I, I'll reach out soon because uh, yes. I have some things that, that I think you'll be interested in. Yeah, I'd love I'd love to chat with you, brother. Awesome. That's uh, and that's that's the goal here is to get the legal tech community working together. Uh, that's what Ivan and I came up with. And don't be afraid to reach out to me too about no. hey you know about promotion or hey we're push, we're putting this out on our blog can you share it anything like that Ivan and I usually ask at the end of the show how we can help just reach out and let me know how I can help with that thank you Jeffrey Poirier thank you Jay Giuliano and and that ends our show today thanks to our replay listeners and viewers for watching Legal Tech Live thanks John. great holiday everyone thanks guys nice job uh, Ivan nice job Ivan <laughs> yeah good job Ivan well done on the run <laughs> and thank you for your service, as always. Exactly. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Good, gentlemen.